My class, in this recording, we're going to be focusing on PhysioX exercise number six, activity number four, the effects of chemical modifiers on the heart. And just as a disclaimer, we're oversimplifying things in today's activity. I know in the actual PhysioX simulation, they talk about how there's agonists, antagonists, um, and we'll still use a little bit of that terminology, but we're going to give you a simp a, a, an oversimplified version. And if you go and take a pharmacology class, you'll get the full flavored version in that setting. So as we're looking at this activity, this activity is going to focus on some chemicals that act on the heart. In particular, we're going to be looking at norepinephrine and epinephrine, aka adrenaline and noradrenaline. These are chemicals, hormones, that bind to the beta-1 androgenic receptors that are located within the sinoatrial node. And as these chemicals bind to those beta-1 androgenic receptors, they are going to cause more sodium and calcium channels opening to open, and this is going to cause the membrane voltage to be raised up a little bit from threshold. It's going to cause the spontaneous depolarization of those pacemaker cells within the sinonatrial node to occur with a higher frequency. So in short, in when we expose the SA node to these two hormones, we increase heart rate in a nutshell. And then on the other end of the spectrum, from the parasympathetic nervous system, we have acetylcholine. And with, from that acetylcholine within our heart, it's going to bind to not the nicotinic receptors, but the muscarinic receptors. And just recall back from bio, 214 muscarinic receptors are named after the mushroom that has a toxin that binds to them. So as we look at those muscarinic cholerogenic receptors in the plasma membrane of the SA node, when nicotine, excuse me, when acetylcholine binds to them, it's going to cause two things to happen. First, it's going to open more potassium channels. And that's going to cause potassium to rush out of the cell and cause the voltage of the cell membrane to decrease, to move farther away from threshold. It does something else. It's going to close some of the calcium and sodium channels. And that's going to make it more difficult to add more positive ions into the cells of the sinoatrial node. In effect, when, nicot when acetylcholine binds to these muscarinic receptors, it causes the cell membrane voltage to become hyperpolarized, and that's going to make it take a longer period of time for that cell to depolarize. What's the bottom line? When we act, when acetylcholine binds to the muscarinic receptors, the heart rate goes down. Now, there's more than just acetylcholine and adrenaline and noradrenaline that can affect the heart. There are many different other chemicals, and we're going to look at some of those chemicals in today's activity. For instance, any chemical that can bind to a cholerogenic receptor is going to be labeled as a cholerogenic chemical. Um, and that's the official version. In this context for this class, just to simplify things, we're just going to say that chemicals that lower the heart rate are cholerogenic chemicals. And then, any, officially, any chemical that binds to an androgenic receptor is going to be considered an andro adrenergetic chemical. But for the purposes of this lab activity, we're just going to say anything that elevates the heart rate is going to be considered an adrenergetic chemical. So we're not necessarily going to spend as much time focusing on the inhibiting or enhancing of the receptor. In the real world, we can have cholerogenic inhibitors and cholerogenic enhancers. I don't want to get bogged down with those details. This is an introductory A and P class, not a graduate level class. So we'll just simplify things and say, if it increases the heart rate, it's androgenic. If it decreases the heart rate, it's cholinergenic. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about your experimental setup. Here's your experimental setup. You have a frog heart and some chemicals that you can expose to the frog heart. And let's pull up that exercise back. Let's go to the experiment. This is what it looks like for you. So we have our setup and you can take different chemicals. Oh, come on, come on. Let me, can I reset this activity? Looks like I need to, oh, there we go, reset, boom. 
So I can take different chemicals and go, hey, look, here's a chemical, drip it on the heart. And then, hey, there's a change in the heart rate. And then I can record that change in the heart rate and get our data. And when we're done collecting all of our data, this is what we end up with. So we find that um, epinephrine, pilocarpine, atropine, and digitalis all affected the heart rate caused some change to our heart rate. And then we have the baseline of 62 beats per minute. Now on your lab objective sheet for this week, instead of having you fill out the table in your lab manual, Ms. Laundrich and I have a custom made table for you that helps to give you a simplified version of what is going on. I'm gonna go ahead and take this table and copy, file, and new document. There we go. So as we're looking at this process, our baseline was 62 beats a minute. With epinephrine, it was 82 beats a minute. Epinephrine, AKA adrenaline. And pilocarpine was 47 beats a minute. Atropine was 72 beats a minute and Digitalis brought it to 43 beats per minute. And just to reiterate, we're gonna just focus, we're oversimplifying things for this class, for your sanity, and just saying if it elevates or decreases the heart rate relative to baseline. So I'll go ahead and I'll use green to say elevates. So adrenaline elevated and atropine elevated, and then I'll use red for decreases. So pilocarpine decreased, and then digitalis decreased relative to our baseline. And I'm gonna say, if it decreased, it's gonna be cholerogenic, so I'll put a big red C for cholerogenic, and I'll put some big red A's for adrenergetic. And compared, because we're oversimplifying things, this next table is gonna be really, this next, these next two columns will be filled out very quickly. So relative, if it's an agonist, it works with. If it's an antagonist, it works against. So as we look at adrenaline, because it raised heart rate, it, and acetylcholine is supposed to lower the heart rate, we're going to say that um, adrenaline, and I should use blue for antagonist, I'll say... Is it blue for antagonist? And then we say, so it worked against acetylcholine. And then over here, we'll use the color yellow, yellow for agonist. As we look at pilocarpine, pilocarpine lowered the heart rate like acetylcholine does. So it worked with acetylcholine and we'll put yellow in those columns. And then as we change our viewpoint, frame of reference to focus on adrenaline relative to adrenaline, we find that adrenaline does the same thing. It's a agonist and atropine also elevates heart rate and is an agonist. And then conversely, uh, <clears throat> pilocarpine, since it lower, lowers the heart rate, does the opposite thing of adrenaline. So we're just gonna oversimplify and say that it is an antagonist and the same for digitalis. So there's our data. And just to, I just wanna reiterate this again, we're not going into promoters and inhibitors. We're just saying if it, we're just only focusing on if it elevated the heart rate or decreased the heart rate. So that's our oversimplification or compromise with this lab. Let's look at our post lab questions. So as we look at our post lab questions, Question number one, define agonist and antagonist. Clearly distinguish between the two and give examples used in this activity. So when we think of an agonist, that is a chemical that works with another chemical that causes the same effect as another chemical. So for instance, based on our data, atropine is an agonist to adrenaline or epinephrine. Let's look at antagonists. Antagonists are chemicals that work have the opposite effect relative to what they're being compared to. So in this example, pilocarpine lowers heart rate. It had the opposite effect of adrenaline. So it's antagonistic to adrenaline. 
Let's look at question number two. Describe the effect of epinephrine on the heart rate and force of contraction. Epinephrine is one of the transmitters of the sympathetic nervous system. And when we activate our sympathetic nervous system, we cause more calcium to rush into the cardiomyocytes. And having more calcium in the cardiomyocytes not only is going to elevate the voltage so that it depolarizes with a higher frequency and consequently we have a higher heart rate, but it's also going to cause for more cross-bridging between the thick and thin filaments of the sarcomere. So epinephrine is going to raise heart rate and increase force of contraction. As we look at atropine and its effects on heart rate, atropine, nope, oh, wrong button, cause the heart rate to go up. So it is and the way the way we've oversimplified things is it's going to be an androgenic androgenic chemical so it elevates the heart rate and then question number four what is the effect of digitalis on the heart rate and force of contraction so as we look at digitalis digitalis caused the heart rate to decrease and as we look at force of contractions here's our baseline force of contraction is analogous to how high the peaks are so as we look at our baseline, we went one, two, just a little bit over. We had one, two, three, and a skosh. We'll say like, we'll say 3.1 units. This is a unitless graph, which is kind of frustrating, but we'll say 3.1 unitless notches for our baseline. And as we look at digitalis, we still went up one, two, three, and a skosh, 3.1 unitless notches. So, in terms of answering this question, in terms of the force of contraction, digitalis had no effect on the force of contraction. However, it did decrease the overall heart rate. That's all we have for Physio X exercise number six, activity number four. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them in the class discussion board, and happy studies.